get back It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm excited. We have Jay Papazan, co-author The One Thing, The Surprisingly Simple Truth Behind Extraordinary Results with Gary Keller. Do you have to read the you know the subhead? You probably worked really long and hard on that subheadline. It's been translated into 24 languages, has more than 275 national bestseller list appearances, including number one on the Wall Street Journal, and has sold millions of copies. And when I ask many top entrepreneurs, one of the most impactful books they read, the one thing comes up over and over. I've personally listened to it three times on Audible. Jay, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, man. I'm excited to be here. Jay, since it's Inspired Insight, I always ask, what's the lowest point and how you push through the tough time in business? Oh, lowest point. Um, you know, my father had a nearly fatal stroke. Whoa. Um, you know, lost a, you know, grandparent. You know, th- those are the... I'm not, you know, and I don't know if you expected a business answer, you know, our sales dropped by 50%. But for me, the lowest low point is almost always going to be personal. Yeah, yeah. And um, I connect my personal development, right, with my professional development. You know, if I want to be a best example for my kids, then I have to be the best I can at what I do. Yeah. And um, try to role model to them what it means to be happy and successful in work. Um, and so like, those are the tough times for me, you know, dealing with sick loved ones, um, people who are struggling, you know, Gary was pretty sick at one point, not like, you know, the verge of death, but you know, he, you know, he had his mother pass away. Yeah. Um, and that's really tough, you know, to lose somebody like that. And then you still come to the office. You don't want to let the team down. And for me, at least, and for him working through those things instead of just stopping is the way we dealt with it. Not. So anyway. that's the reality, Jay. You know, and I like that you said that because, you know, we are focused on the one thing in business or the one thing in family. When and you know, we get thrown for loops when that stuff happens. So when like you have a family member or a mother or father gets sick, how do you shift? Like, what do you do as far as you said? You just keep going. What does that mean? Well, partnership helps, right? You yeah. know, so. Um, you know, you get on a plane and you go be where you need to be and you're hundred percent right. there while you're there, but you let your partners know. It's like, okay, my one thing has just shifted. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing. Like if you have a sick child at home, you're going to go home and be with them if you're a single parent. Right. If your spouse can't cover and that is your one thing, right? right. If you're choosing work over a loved one, bad priorities, right? Well, then you have to catch up and that's the hard part. If you're really committed to being, you know, goal driven, and your you know, thing was, I'm going to write a page a day, you know, five pages a week, and you lose two weeks because you had to go home and take care of it. Well, now you've got to pick up the pace, and you're behind yeah. 10 pages. Yeah. And so you know, the next week, your goal is 30 pages, and maybe you do 15. And the next week, you set 15, and maybe you do 10. It yeah. might take you a whole month of really grinding it out. So that's the way you know, we try to live, and we try to definitely coach people to perform. If you get behind... Um, get back on track fast. Yeah. If your people are getting behind, get them back on track on fast. When people know that you're paying attention, yeah. um, they don't slip and they don't stay slip because they're waiting for you to say, hey, what happened? Yeah, yeah. What about on the flip side, one of the proudest moments outside of obviously your kids being born and getting married and all that? Oh, gosh, there have been a lot. You know, the, I've never had a book that got translated into as many languages. And so, like, we're in Indonesia and, um, you know, seeing our book in a bookstore. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Especially um, being a translator. Because you were, it was interesting. You were translate, was it like medical things in France? Yeah. I work for an orthopedic medical company. So, like, knee surgeries and stuff like that. Right. It, it's not what 
it's what I did so I could live in France. Right, I would right. never pretend to say I was a translator. <laughs> I, I masqueraded as one so I could live in France. Right. So it's been but, translated in different languages. What else has been just... You know, the first time, I mean, I remember the first time I saw anyone in a public place reading one of my books yeah. that I hadn't personally given the book. It's That's one thing to walk cool. in your living room and your mom's reading your book. Yeah. But to walk into your grocery store or restaurant, you know, there's a place called uh, like Whole Foods here. It's called Central Market. And they have a great, healthy restaurant. And we're walking in, and there's a guy sitting at the table reading The Millionaire Real Estate Investor. And yeah. I was like, that is so cool. That is so cool. You know, you look over and someone's reading the one thing in an airport, you know. And I was yeah. like, those are like, you know, my kids seeing my book in an airport bookstore. Like right. I have a series of those little moments. And each time there was a first time, yeah. it was a big deal because I'm, I'm a book nerd at heart. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so I always I want I have a couple. I have a last question for you, Jay. But before I ask it, um, thank you for your time. Book Thank is phenomenal. You, Everyone should check out the one thing. Where where should we point people towards to to check out on the web? I know the one thing dot com. That's the and then the number one thing dot com. Where else should we point people towards to check out? Maybe the time blocking mastery. Where that's where can they check blocking. that up? Yeah, the one thing dot com with the number one is where everything lives, including yeah. my social links and all of that. If they want to connect with me, yeah. and then time blocking mastery dot com is where the new course op- we're offering lives, and that's pretty cool. I mean, people should check it out. I think there's three videos that they can watch on it without making any commitment. Yeah. Um, yeah, check that out. I mean, I highly suggest it. Like I said, um, I highly value my time and I've listened to it three times just because I think there's not enough at times I can hear that, that message, um, so and awesome. implement it. Thank you. Um, I thought you were gonna say for the proudest moment, um, I was reading something about you're involved with heroes for children. Yeah. What, is, what is that? So gosh, I'll do the quick version. Yeah. We got challenged, you know, as a company to stop giving each other gifts at Christmas and start giving back. Yeah. And so I looked up and my wife and I like, we're at a place where we're wealth building. We can give so much, but we want to do more. So why don't we make set? So we started setting goals around fundraising. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And, um, I went to a poker tournament for charity and it was called heroes for children or hold them for heroes. Right. And all the proceeds benefited children battling cancer. Wow. And there's all kinds of expenses that fall through the cracks. Sure. And so I attended one year. The next year I volunteered for the committee. And then the last four years, my wife and I have led the committee. And so each year we set higher goals. And last year we netted over a hundred grand wow. in one night. That's amazing. Which for us is like that's a huge number, yeah, you know, yeah. for us to finally attain with one little old poker event in town. And it's that's just cool because yeah. you get yeah. to meet these parents and what they're dealing with and you know, just buying them gas money, you know, can make the difference. The little things. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations with that. That's awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Um, I am really proud of that. Yeah. Um, so my last question is about your family um, and how your wife's role in your success. Uh, and, muse, uh, inspiration. I can go all those things, yeah. right? Because you'll listen to this, I'm sure. Because um, she's very impressive. I think I was reading about her that... I think one, I don't know if she, you know, business wise, I'm sure, you know, as a, as a wife and as a mom, also impressive, but it was, you know, on the business side, she told like 1 million, then 3 million, then 20 million or whatever it was in real estate. Yeah. And she's already sold 40 million this year. That's wild. She's uh crazy successful. Um, she's competitive with herself, not yeah. other people. Um, she hires amazing talent and yeah. surrounds herself with yeah. it. She's. So what has um, she taught you about business? Well, she's a natural CEO. I'm not. Yeah. Um, I know that that's somebody I have to hire. Um, I can own the business. I have no business running it. She can do both. So um, she's very action oriented. She is unafraid to ask for what she needs. Mm-hmm. So, like when we're doing fundraising, she always raises more money because she'll just start calling random businesses. And she had T-shirts made this year. How do you feel about kids with cancer? <laughs> that's how she leads. Right. Right. I feel horrible about him. Well, how much would you like to donate? Right. <laughs> the right to it. And um, she inspires me. She's a great, great lady and really committed to having a big life. Like we want to travel. We both want to own big businesses, but we're on the same page. We want to raise great kids. And that's the bigger task. Yeah. And how do we do both? Yeah. And that means we have to say no to some opportunities so that we can be there for our family yeah. and 
I love that we're on the same page. You do entrepreneur activities with your kids too. Yeah. Right. So what, what kind of things for, for parents of young kids or, you know, not young kids, what should they, what, I'm curious of what you guys do. Well, um, we ended up getting them in a different school. My son was doing great. We went to a public school. I believe in public schools, but my daughter was not flourishing there. And so there's a, here in Austin, Texas, a thing called the Acton Academy. Mm -hmm. I've never and heard of it, yeah. They have an MBA program, and the MBA was all Socratic method. It's all case studies and mm. Socratic method. Interesting. And so nobody told you the answers. You had to go find them for yourself. Yeah. And the, the students were like, I want my kids to experience this. Right. And so they founded this small school, and we were some of the first kids to be a part of it. So my kids have to set goals every morning. They manage their own education. And they get to choose what they work on each day. And they have goals in all these categories. They eventually right. have to get to it. But they want yeah. to just read one day. They just read one day. Right. And so I credit you know, what we did is we were open and willing to put them in an alternative learning environment. Right. But right. we've reinforced that at home. Yeah. You know, yeah. How, do, how would you do that? So I would just say this. If you don't do the school thing, instead of telling your kids answers, start asking better questions. Right. So what would you do to find your shoes, Gus? What would you do if you really were hungry and I wasn't here? And they're really resourceful if you let right. them do But I'm usually so impatient. I'm like, your shoes are over there. <laughs> Go make yourself a peanut butter and jelly. But teaching them and trusting right. them to think for themselves is right. the best gift. Yeah. And it requires entrepreneurs. I mean, we're not the most patient people. You have to slow down. And asking questions is the heart of coaching. Yeah. What's the most interesting thing you've you've seen your kids discover or learn from that process? Um, well, my daughter has self-discovered kind of what's called the hero's journey they talk about. And really? so they they really hmm. have gotten, and this is cool, that failure is the path to success. Hmm. And you know, they talk about like breaking down movies. This is the hero's darkest hour, and this wow. is when they find their mentor. You know, it's the classic. You know, every tale is the same, but they've made that a business tale. Yeah. And so the kids have internalized that. Wow. And so my daughter, I don't know if she has or not, she actually thinks that she's found her calling. And Which is what? Really, she wants to be a programmer. Really? Which is, you know, I guess writing, programming, you know, there's some of that going on. But like she's teaching, she taught herself Python. Wow. And is, you know, sitting there on the computer and will code on her days off and, I'm just like, I love that she's passionate about something. Yeah. And uh, that whole idea that they're kind of unafraid of failure is awesome because that's yeah. something a lot of us adults are a little afraid of. Yeah. Jay, this has been absolutely fantastic. I really appreciate it. Everyone should check out The One Thing and their time blocking mastery. Thank you so much, Jay. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach if you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand